Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, we've just uh, learned of a very terrible tragedy that took place just south of the Capitol here, over at 18th and Jackson. One of our very treasured officers, a sergeant with the, with the police department, was shot and murdered. And um, if we could, before we begin the press conference, I would really appreciate it if we could just take a few minutes and pause and uh, think about the officer's family and his colleagues and, and all the people that uh, our law enforcement um, protects um, as we move through our daily lives. So if you would just join me in a few minutes of silence. Thank you. Well, good morning uh, again uh, to all of you. This is a pretty exciting day to say the least. Let me begin by saying that uh, the ability of our great state to compete in the global economic, e economy requires a commitment to innovation, creativity, and excellence. We created the new Commerce Authority knowing that the competitive nature of the global market requires our absolute resolve, focus, and collaboration with the private sector partners. Arizona is competitive when our policies create an environment which supports innovation, rewards investments, minimizes government intervention, and encourages productivity. Arizona is competing, and we are witnessing the benefits. One such example is Intel Corporation. For 30 years, Intel has contributed significantly to Arizona's economic prosperity. Its breakthrough technologies have changed our lives. The high paying jobs generate stability and significant economic activity. Their multi-dollar investments are crucial to the overall economic fabric of our state. However, what really sets Intel apart from others is what they do to improve education, environmental performance, and our communities overall. Intel demonstrates consistent leadership and commitment as they work with us to address some of our state's most pressing challenges. From helping train more than 10,000 Arizona's teachers in the effective use of technology in the classroom, to thousands of students learning math and science and competing in Intel-sponsored science and engineering fairs. From engaging with stakeholders in an open and transparent manner as they improve environmental stewardship to promoting best practices in water conservation. Intel is a world-class innovator and amplifies the very best in corporate citizenship. And I'm delighted today to introduce John Pemberton, Intel Vice President and Plant Manager for FAB32, who has some very exciting news to share for Arizona. John. Good morning and thank you, Governor. Uh, today's an exciting day for us at Intel. Uh, several years ago, we had an equally exciting day as Intel announced a $7 billion investment as we brought 32 nanometer capacity online in New Mexico, here in Arizona, and up in Oregon. Uh, today, we have an equally exciting day as Intel is announcing our 22 nanometer investment as we bring new capacity online over the next several years. Uh, the 22 nanometer uh, announcement specifically is, is Intel will be investing six to eight billion dollars, that's B with a B, uh, billion, uh, over the next several years to upgrade our facilities in Oregon and here in Arizona. Uh, specifically here in Arizona, we're very delighted to announce that we will upgrade and retrofit both of our uh, 300 millimeter manufacturing fabs, both Fab 12, which is the 65 nanometer uh, plant today, and Fab 32, which is 45 nanometer and 32 nanometer. Both will be getting upgraded and retrofitted to be capable of doing leading edge technologies over the course of the next several years. Uh, together, these two uh, uh, sites, Oregon and Arizona, uh, together will create uh, six to 8,000 new construction jobs, much needed in our current economy, as well as add 800 to 1,000 permanent Intel jobs uh, between the two campuses. So we're very excited, both with the capital <laughs> investment and being able to bring new employment to both of those campuses. 
Now this announcement is clearly a testament to two sets of folks that I'd like to say uh, briefly thank you and, and recognize. One is our Intel employees whose hard work and dedication at our Ocotillo campus in South Chandler and really their ability to bring generation after generation new complex technology to the marketplace is uh, causing Intel to have confidence that we're another place that they want to continue to invest in. I'd also like to say thank you to the city, county, and state uh, government officials who have really done a great job of helping Arizona continue to be competitive in a very global uh, competitive landscape. Uh, the sales factor, the R&D tax credits are just examples of what the folks here in Arizona have done to attract companies like Intel as well as other companies to be able to continue to do business here. that I decided long ago that when we began this campaign that we were going to have a plan and we have followed through with that plan. I am not going to give Mr. Goddard another avenue to reinvent himself. There's absolutely no need for it. Mr. Goddard has ran for governor uh, three different times and has lost. They know who Terry Goddard is. Jan Brewer has served the people of Arizona honorably for 28 years. They know who Jan Brewer is. And I am taking my message out to the community, out to the people of Arizona, and telling them who Jan Brewer is and where she is headed. And um, I have not been running, and I have not been hiding. I've been all over this state. And for my Democrat opponent to keep ponying up uh, that kind of lyrics, if you will, to incite the voters, uh, to me is ridiculous.